I am a big admirer of Matt Dillahunty and the Atheist Experience. They are informed, articulate, erudite, thoughtful, and in my opinion, usually correct. But the operative word here is usually. In a recent exchange, uh, Matt made what I consider to be a fairly large mistake about the nature of both belief and logic. I'm going to show the clip here in a second, but first let me put it into context. A caller by the name of Gregory was proposing that we define God as the sum of all human creativity, or some such. Uh, Matt rightly said that this move was at best wholly superfluous, and at worst, really confusing. Nothing is gained by naming creativity as God, and in fact doing so makes a mess of our natural language. Then the caller proceeded to make the claim that he both believes and does not believe in God. That's where Matt went off. At this point, I, I consider myself just as much of an atheist as I do a theist. I'm well, that's absolutely the absurd. <laughs> well, that's like saying I consider myself just as much a basketball as not a basketball. That is a completely you're, you're a irrational, illogical okay. statement. But the words have meanings, and theism carries with it the meaning that one believes there is a God, and that is a binary position. Either you believe that there is a God, or you do not. There is no in-between. There is a single claim. God exists. Either you believe that claim, or you do not believe that claim. There is no middle ground. There is no line to erase. I can draw you a Venn diagram that demonstrates it. It is, it, this is, this is logic 101. Now, normally, I'd be inclined to let something like this go, but because Matt said this. We welcome ideas, we welcome discussion, we welcome everybody, but be, do this with the knowledge that when you say something stupid, you're going to be flayed alive. I feel like I have to do some flaying of my own, because what Matt Dillahunty said right there was actually very stupid, or at least very ignorant. The kind of logic Matt's talking about here is called classical logic. It dates back at least as far as Aristotle, and is an incredibly powerful tool in many respects. According to classical logic, there are only two truth values, true and false and all propositional statements fall into one of these two categories. This is called the principle of bivalence, and it held sway over the field of logic for about 2,000 years. While Aristotle himself realized that the principle of bivalence had limitations, it really wasn't until the 20th century that logicians started exploring new logical systems that did not accept the principle of bivalence. So-called multi-valued logics were developed, wherein any proposition could have more than two truth values. A simple three-valued logic, for example, might use the truth values of true, false, or unknown. There are even infinite-valued logics called fuzzy logics that map the truth value of a statement to any number ranging from zero to one. Multi-valued logics are essential for making sense of certain propositions. Consider the claim, Spock is Vulcan. Is that true or false? Well, it's both. He's half Vulcan, half human. A two-valued logic can't really parse that proposition very well. You, sure, you could try to clean up your semantics by arbitrarily defining Vulcan as only applying to you know, pure-blood Vulcans, in which case the proposition would be false, or only those who are at least half Vulcan, in which case the proposition would be true. But any such def definition would be arbitrary, and it would limit our ability to map the world in ways that we care about. We need multi-valued logics to account for vague predicates. Think about the so-called Sorieties paradox, also known as the paradox of the heap. Sorieties is, is Greek for heap. It goes something like this. Premise 1. One million grains of sand is a heap of sand. Premise 2. A heap of sand minus one grain of sand is still a heap. Both of these premises seem intuitively true, but you can iterate them until you come to the conclusion that one grain of sand is still a heap, which is absurd, hence the paradox. Now, if we only have two valued logic at our disposal, then for any number of grains of sand, it is either true that it is a heap, or it is false that it is a heap. That means the only way to avoid the paradox is to stipulate a number of grains at which we no longer have a heap. But such a move is not only arbitrary, it also violates premise two, which seems like it's true. 
On the other hand, if we have a multi-valued logic at our disposal, the paradox disappears right away. It's not simply true or false that a given number of grains are a heap. You can have a nice sliding scale that perfectly reflects our intuitions about vagueness. Now, for the record, the idea of multi-valued logic is not something I'm making up. I wish it were. I, that way I could take credit for it. Logicians have developed these systems over the last 100 years, and they have practical applications in everything from computing and stock market analysis to quantum mechanics and evolutionary theory. Now, enough background on logic. Let's turn to the topic of belief. What is better for modeling human belief? Two-valued logic or multi-valued logic? Well, like most things, it depends. Sometimes a two-valued logic works just fine, but sometimes we need a multi-valued logic. For example, I'm, her I'm sure you've heard people say, well, I'm not sure what I believe. As a teacher, I hear this just about every day. In situations like that, a three-valued logic does a much better job of mapping reality than a two-valued one. And in the context of belief in God, the fact that we have at least three basic categories, theist, atheist, agnostic, this suggests that a multi-valued logic might be more useful there, too. Now, I know what you're thinking. Agnostics lack a belief in God, so if the proposition in question is, you believe in God, then for theists it's true, atheists and agnostics it's false, hence a two-valued logic works just fine. And yes, depending on what you want to do, you can find ways to shoehorn just about any situation into a two-valued system. Like I said, logicians did just that for over 2,000 years. But you have to realize that comes at a cost. There are aspects to reality, and to the nuances of human psychology and belief in particular, that we want our logic to be able to map in detail. If we insist on only using two-valued logic, we will not be able to have the kind of high-resolution map that we want. There are degrees of belief. There are some beliefs that we are fully committed to, and others we are not so committed to, but nonetheless we still believe. Do we really want to ignore this very real graduation in human psychology just so we can cling to an arcane and outdated logical system that doesn't really purchase us anything other than a false sense of certainty? Now, I don't know if there's any sense to be made in Gregory's assertion that he both believes in God and does not believe in God. He didn't exactly seem like the most rigorous of thinkers, and it's quite possible he's just a moron who has no idea what he's talking about. But I do know that human beliefs are too nuanced and intricate to capture with a simple true-false logic, and it behooves us to respect that complexity by bringing to bear on it systems of logic that can adequately accommodate it. Today